Kevin Elizabeth, an international wedding photographer based in San Diego. And I thought that today I would actually talk about something that I see asked about quite often on websites like Reddit or even Instagram, and that is the decision to elope. So some couples want to elope because of cost. Some couples want to elope because they just want a really small wedding. They don't want it to be a huge ordeal and they feel like by eloping, typically somewhere overseas or somewhere destination, that they can kind of get away with having those fewer guests, maybe just their immediate family, immediate friends, whatever it is that they want to have present, that is kind of a really easy way to do it. Um, now, whether that's your reason or you have a different reason that you're thinking about eloping, I wanted to talk about the subject of more along the lines of a luxury elopement. And what I mean by that is that you are not just going to a place and just having an officiant, you know, on the sand, bare bones, no flowers, no decor. Um, that is sort of like just an elopement. What I'm talking about is more of a high-end elopement where even though your costs are way lower than a typical wedding because you don't have that many people and you don't need a large scale of decor, I'm talking about where you actually invest in flowers, you're investing in decor, but it's just on a smaller scale. Now, one of the benefits of having fewer guests is that your costs can go way down. So say you have a budget of $15,000 and you want to elope. Now, if you just have like eight to 15 guests, that money can go very far and it can look like a much higher end wedding than if you had a budget of $15,000 with 75 guests. That would look really, really sparse. You might not have much room for decor at all, but if you've got like 10 guests, then that is definitely something that you're going to be able to allocate more funds to guest enjoyment and decor. Now, given that this is sort of something that you care about and you're interested in the idea, one thing that I would recommend is choosing a location that you think is gonna be really beautiful. So somewhere in Italy, maybe on Lake Como, that sort of a place is going to be really gorgeous for eloping. It feels very intimate. It feels like an adventure. And it's a place where any guests that do go, whether it's just your parents or it's like 10 of your closest friends and family, they're gonna really love that experience. Now, if you want to take on some decor, what I would recommend is investing beautifully in some sort of ceremony arch to stand behind you when you're saying your vows. And then you could repurpose that arch and put it somewhere behind the reception table or tables and just kind of reuse it. So that's very easy to do. And it's something that you can utilize those flowers for. Now for the reception itself, since you have so few people, you can really go to town. You can have beautiful chargers and dinnerware and flatware and glassware and gorgeous flowers that look really lush and really expensive, but it didn't cost you that much because you only need a very little amount of it. And this is something that I think can be so, so beautiful is having something that is just a stunning experience environmentally and with your decor that creates this just very unique ambiance that's very intimate, yet it's very upscale. At the same time, it's still very relaxed because there aren't that many people. That is like my ideal wedding. So I would love to do something like that. And if we weren't having our wedding here in San Diego, I might've wanted to go to Annecy, France, which is a gorgeous town in France that sits right on Lake Annecy. It is so beautiful. That's totally where I would have gone there or maybe Santorini. Something like that is what I totally would have chosen if we were just eloping and if we had like six people with us, that would have been it. So that could have been something that's nice. And if you're kind of thinking about it, I really encourage it because some people just don't want a big wedding. Some people want less people. Some people want lower cost. But if you still want it to look really, really beautiful, you could absolutely do that. And it is not that hard to get a stunning looking wedding. Now, if you're wondering like, how do I get started once I have a place? My recommendation would be to choose a planner. And you might be thinking, why in the world would I need a planner for this wedding for like 10 people? And they can really help you out. They can actually help coordinate different travel details. They can arrange for the rentals to be there. They can bring them with them. They can find you great vendors who are local or vendors that you can fly out there. All sorts of things that they can do to make this a huge help for you because maybe if even if they don't know the area where you're getting married or if they do, Either way, they're gonna know what to do and they're gonna know how to make this a beautiful, 
smooth wedding for you without you having to worry about it. So that's sort of a full service level planning. Um, you're not really gonna get that level of help from a day of coordinator. Um, another thing that this planner probably should be doing is design work. So I would recommend not just having them for logistics, but having them for design too. And that way they can really help you make this a stunning, unique event that's gonna look really gorgeous in photos and be really cool for you and your guests to experience. Now, the next thing you can do is to find a photographer. Now, I would say if you're thinking, should I have vendors who live there or vendors who live here? I think it's really up to you. Um, I think look at the work of the people there. And if you're just not loving it, then find someone else. You could literally fly someone from anywhere in the world. So I have friends who are planners who work in Italy all the time, but they live in San Diego. I have florist friends who live all over the country, but they work all the time in Europe. So there's all these great things. So I think that if you have the budget for it and you have an eye for the certain kind of style, find that person no matter where they live and get them there. That is what I would do. Now I know that that can be really expensive. So if you are on kind of a lower budget elopement, then I would maybe recommend trying to go with a couple more local vendors to cut down on travel costs. But if it's something that is gonna fit in your budget, I highly recommend flying somebody out who you know and trust. Maybe you can find somebody who say lives in the same city as you you, have your engagement photos with them and then they go to do your destination elopement photography. That's something that I have done for people and I really enjoy that we get to know each other throughout the whole process and I will link a video up here on why you should have the same photographer for your wedding and engagement and it'll all make a lot of sense. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you are leaning towards eloping, I say go for it. I say you can really make a lot out of it. Now, if you're just wanting a really simple, non-decorated elopement, that's totally fine too. But if you're somebody who wants to get a little bit fancy, has a nice budget for decor items, then this is something that I would highly recommend to you because it's just gonna be like no other experience you or your guests have ever had. If you guys did enjoy this video, please let me know down in the comments. Let me know if you would ever consider eloping or if you are already married, if you would consider some sort of like destination vow renewal. Um, be sure to subscribe so you guys never miss a video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.